When on the verge of opening a new chapter in our lives, things can seem exciting, yes, but also uncertain or terrifying. But the changes on the horizon for 21-year-old Brandon Herring were welcomed and happily anticipated. A child on the way with his fiance, searching for a place to settle down and looking for a new car. But Brandon would never meet his son. Today on Dark Matters, the case of Brandon Herring. Raytown, Missouri, a suburb on the outskirts of Kansas City, was home to 21-year-old Brandon Herring. He'd begun searching for an apartment for himself, his fiance, and their soon-to-be son named King Joseph, a reference to the Bible and to Brandon's faith. The prospect of fatherhood causes anxiety for many, but Brandon, by all accounts, was ecstatic about starting a family. A lovable, teddy bear-like jokester with a knack and desire for making everyone laugh, Brandon was passionate about singing and had a smile to light up any room. A graduate of Raytown South High in 2013, the former football player found himself drawn to occupations involving carpentry, roof installment, and electronic repair. Rhonda Herring watched as her son grew into a man and, in her own words, she, quote, couldn't have asked for a better son, end quote. Over the course of 2016, Brandon gathered toys, a car seat, diapers, shoes, clothes, and other supplies needed to make sure his son would be well taken care of, and he kept them in a room at his mother's house. He particularly favored a shirt he'd acquired that read Daddy's Little Buddy across the chest. And though he was preparing to start a family of his own, mother and son spoke every day, at least on the phone. However, on a fall day in 2016, Rhonda called her son, not knowing it would be the last time he would answer. Monday, November 21st, is the last day family sees Brandon. Tuesday, Rhonda dials her son's number to speak to him, knowing that because the baby was due soon, he would have his phone charged and always at his side. He'd mentioned he might be going out to look at buying a car, and upon answering the phone, she asks him what he's up to. He responds, Mom, I'm cool, just out. She says that she was just checking in on him and tells Brandon she loves him. He says, I love you too, Mama. They disconnect the call. As time passed, Rhonda sensed something was wrong, especially after dialing again 15 minutes later and having the call go straight to voicemail. It seemed he'd turned off his phone or it had died. Wednesday passed entirely without a word from him, and his seat remained empty on Thanksgiving Day. Rhonda phoned Brandon 187 times by Friday, more frantic with each voicemail. It was uncharacteristic of him to stay away and not contact family, especially with his unborn son on the way. Authorities and relatives searched the metro areas Brandon frequented, but found no trace of him. Friday, November 25th, 2016. The Herrings get a call from a woman claiming to have seen Brandon on Thanksgiving Day, sitting on the steps of the Park Meadows apartment complex. Family rushes over, passing out flyers along the way, hoping someone might know more. Not far away from where the witness claimed to see Brandon sitting, the windows of a vacant apartment were shot out, riddled with 12 to 13 bullet holes. On the ground nearby, they find shell casings. One report claims a relative of the previous tenant of the apartment in question let the family inside, where they found more bullet holes in the walls. At some point, the Kansas City Police Department arrives. There are two different accounts of what was investigated. One is that the authorities didn't investigate inside the apartment at all, but only gathered evidence outside the residence. The other account was a response to a media inquiry, and the authorities say they did not locate anyone inside the apartment. With no concrete physical evidence to connect Brandon to the case, though, 
Authorities can't for sure say they're connected, and family has little else to go off of. Unfortunately, time hasn't healed this particular wound. Weeks pass without new leads, but in the approaching winter, a new joy temporarily lifts the spirits of the Herring family. On December 13th, 2016, King Joseph Herring was born into the world, but Brandon had yet to return home, and no one had seen or heard from him. Media coverage was sparse, but when they questioned if Brandon might have left of his own accord with a baby on the way, Rhonda said the following. We asked if there's any way her son, who was expecting his first child, could have run away. Brandon had been waiting for this son of his to come. That was best Brandon's heart, pride and joy. King Joseph Herring was born 10 days ago. Two days from Christmas, 41 Action News covers the case again, revealing that Raytown authorities claim the investigation was still ongoing. However, the Herrings begged to differ. Rhonda felt authorities weren't taking the disappearance seriously. She spent her days searching and revisiting Park Meadows apartments and claims getting help was like pulling teeth, leaving her outraged and disappointed. Community outreach efforts tried to garner more attention for the case, but the Herrings were forced to spend Christmas without Brandon. Despite missing Thanksgiving, the birth of his son, and Christmas, family held out hope, searching and praying that Brandon might return to them to raise his son and pursue his dreams. Nearby, another family endured a similar unfolding tragedy. John Michael Runyons is the father of 21-year-old Jessica Runyons, who vanished on the night of September 8, 2016. On Saturday, January 21, 2017, nearly two months after Brandon vanished at approximately 11 a.m., John, his cousin, and several other searchers scoured a creek bed off of East 67th Terrace and Lewis Avenue when they stumbled across a body. Police arrived on scene and confirmed John located Brandon Herring's body, 12 feet from the road, face up in the creek, shrouded in debris. Jessica's body was eventually found, and her accused killer is also being charged in the homicide of Kara Kapetsky. Concerning finding Brandon, John said, We may not have found Jessica, but somebody else's family is going to get some answers. Family was devastated to learn Brandon would never return home the way they'd hoped. Rhonda's faith helped her prepare for the worst and deal with the aftermath. Knowing her last words to Brandon were, I love you, offered her some comfort in spite of the circumstances. Law enforcement haven't publicly announced how long Brandon's body was in the creek bed or his cause of death. However, both Rhonda and KCTV5 reported that Brandon died from a fatal gunshot wound, reportedly to the head. Rhonda claims police believe Brandon was killed not long after her final phone call with him. His phone was never located, and as for who took Brandon's life, Rhonda says she knows who's behind it, and so do police, yet no arrests have been made. And you guys know these gentlemen, and I'm using gentlemen lightly. You know, because we know. We just need justice. She also told media, The police have been telling me they need more evidence. A young lady heard them when they shot Brandon in the truck, but she didn't see it. Jealousy. It was about money. Brandon was trying to buy a new car, get an apartment for his new son and his fiance. But it seems until new evidence comes to light or someone who knows something or saw something comes forward, Justice for Brandon will be a game of waiting. At the time this video goes live, King Joseph Herring would be about one and a half years old. For the Herrings, there's no question about keeping Brandon's memory alive for his son. Rhonda said, I will say to him, you had a good dad. He was a loving daddy with a big heart. She also told KCTV5 the following. We're going to raise that young man as his father. We're going to give him all the great memories of his dad. We're going to let his son know that his father was so respected and so loved. The hole Brandon's absence carved out is a hard one to bear. 
but they bear it together, evidenced by the friends and family bringing comfort on the year anniversary of his disappearance. Still, true closure won't come until his killer or killers have been brought to justice. If you know anything about the circumstances surrounding Brandon Herring's murder or the identity of his killer or killers, please either contact the Kansas City, Missouri Crime Stoppers tip line at 816-474-8477 or the Raytown Police Department at 816-737-6020. Special thanks to the Patreon family. The names you see on screen are just some of the people who financially contribute to this channel. And whether they are passionate about cases like Brandon's or the other content on this channel, their support cannot be overstated. If you are interested in supporting the channel, information is in the description, but even if you only continue to support by watching, thank you. Thank you for giving Brandon's case just a moment of your time, and my heart goes out to his family and his friends. Um, you can clearly see his mother is struggling and suffering. Um, she and their family and friends have gone too long without answers, and we all hope closure can begin soon. The family also has a You Caring campaign linked in the description for those of you who wish to help. Um, Brandon's case has stuck with me since I first learned of it, and I hope his story continues on with you as well. And no matter what you choose to believe or what you speculate, I ask you only for respect in the comments below, both for Brandon and his family. And remember, though these may be dark matters, the darkness always matters. Thank you for watching the video. Exposure to cases such as Brandon's is highly important. And thank you all for your continued support and for always receiving these cases openly and respectfully. Stay safe, friends, and have a good night.